everyone. Welcome to Ask Me About K-Pop, the essential guide for recent comforts and seasoned fans alike. My name is Shannon. And I'm Angelica. And welcome to the podcast. Um, we Today is going to be an interesting day. We're going to talk about something kind of kind of loosey-goosey, but I'm excited about it. It's not it. loosey-goosey. It's a, it's a hard and fast, fact-spaced topic. True. We got a list. That's true. We got statistics. <laughs> That's very true. Data. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Facts. <laughs> Spreadsheets. <laughs> um, but before we get to that, <laughs> so have, many spreadsheets. <laughs> before we get to that, we have a little bit of business up top. So last week, we tried our hardest to talk about underrated groups. We tried and failed. <laughs> we tried and failed. <laughs> we didn't try that hard. We tried a little bit uh, to talk about underrated groups. We didn't know very many, mm-hmm. but we asked you guys for underrated groups and we got. And you came through. You came through. So. I wanted to share those up top so that yeah, just a shout out to these underrated groups from our fans as recommended. Yes, they are. So on Instagram, uh, our listener like, uh, let's see, I don't know. It's hard to pronounce people's fake internet games names because it's like, is that even a real thing? Uh, Do your best. Full Gras Two HB says CLC, also Gugudan. Who also suffers from the IOI curse. They do. I I saw that post and I was like, oh my god, duh. Why didn't we mention CLC? We love CLC. Totally. Just airbrained. Airbrained. Um, okay. A quiet kerfuffle on Instagram says ONF, which I had never, never heard, of, heard, heard of them. Astro. Love them. And SF9. Mm-hmm. Uh, Marisai World on Instagram said Astro. Okay. Ladies so two Code. Two votes for Astro. Yeah, two votes for Astro. Ladies oh, yeah, Code. Ladies Code. And I don't M- know anything about MXM, them. which I don't know if that's a boy group or a girl group. I've never heard of MXM. We got to Google MXM. Okay. <laughs> uh, Lisa Taut Photo says Vix and Infinite are underrated. Okay, yeah. I thought about Vix and Infinite and Icon and Winner during our underrated episode because I was like, these are groups whose names I'm familiar with, but like, I know that they're sort of like second tier, maybe. Right. So maybe that's why they're considered. But I didn't consider them because, or I didn't name them specifically because I was thinking like, but they're very well known. You know, right. like they do have fan bases, but I guess they're not on that same level as like EXO or BTS totally. or Shiny or something. So maybe, may, I guess they count. And on Instagram, my time to fangirl says B2B are underrated. Oh, okay. Um, which I like, I don't know. There's a part, like, it's been interesting this B2B thing where like, I didn't think I knew anything about B2B until we went to that concert, concert this yeah. year. That Korean music And it was like a big deal Bowl. that they be there. But a thing that's been coming a lot up a lot in this Hyuna and Hyojong stuff is everybody being like, oh, Cube is ruined. And all these B2B fans being like, excuse you, look how much money B2B made this year. And they do make a ton of money for Cube. So like, they mm. are popular somehow. They are very popular because remember they had... All those fangirls and all of those light sticks. Like yeah, when, people were going nuts yeah, at that show. At the Hollywood Bowl, there it was filled with B2B light sticks. So like they have this very significant fan base. So I don't know if you would necessarily consider them underrated. Although maybe you would because they don't get that much fanfare. Or like they don't get that much recognition. Yeah, maybe it's just so they, they don't have get. solid fans, but they don't have a lot of press coverage. Yeah, I think I feel like that's the difference. Like maybe an underrated group is one that doesn't come up in people's mm-hmm. like everyday conversation like yeah. their name doesn't come up when you're like talking mm-hmm. about k-pop groups or whatever yeah so then probably like icon winner monster x like these are groups that don't come up very often or like google don oh my girl uh clc like these names yeah 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 no totally. we know their songs and we know who they are but like they're just not a not as central of a piece of the conversation exactly so do you want to talk to us about monster X? okay yeah i was hoping i thought i had a tumblr message about an underrated group that i was trying to find but i might have lost it in the in the shuffle of tumblr but yeah i guess i'll get to that so it's it's confession time and it's also Oh, we can make this. This is an announcement of our new segment, and it's called Ask You About (laughs) K-Pop. And it's where we ask you guys things, and we need you to tell us so that we could do episodes or or fulfill our own weird fangirl stuff. And this is that case. So, Ask You About K-Pop. I have to confess that over the last week, I have developed what I can only describe as a very serious crush on Monsta X. Mm-hmm. 
I am not, I am not committing to standing. I cannot call myself a Mumbebe yet. Even though that name is fucking good. Oh, it's good and I want to be one. <laughs> but here's the problem, guys. I love Monster Access people. I have been watching their weekly idols, their idol rooms, like all their variety Monster mm. X-Ray episodes. They're such precious human beings. I love them as people. And they're so beefy. And they're so and cute. To use a 90s word that no one uses anymore, Monster X is hunky. Ooh. They're hunks. They are hunky. Four of them have... Grade a piece of meat yes four of them have football player necks like the kind of necks that are as big around as their heads and like there's just like a sexy jockness about them that i really really yeah. like and but, appa keeps unzipping that flight oh, suit fucking so show now. uh if if it matters to any mumbai bay listeners i am show new and chew on biased at the moment <laughs> if that surprises any of you it shouldn't uh, but the They're problem so is, pretty. guys, I don't like Monster X's music. So this is where I need your help. I know. We both, like many people apparently this week, watched their performance of Versace on the floor on Sketchbook. And I fucking died. Yeah. Like, I didn't expect you to care when I said to you, I was like, I'm just going to try and see if I can get on Helga to give a shit. I <laughs> was... Speechless after watching that performance. That performance took me about, it's maybe a four minute long song. It took me 10 minutes to watch it because halfway through it, I had to pause it and breathe mm -hmm. and like recenter myself and meditate for a moment <laughs> because I was so out of sorts. Like, what's the one that I, whose face I liked? Chuan. His face is very nice, and I decided that he was my favorite uh, when they were doing that roller coaster dance yes. of shootout on Weekly Idol, and they were just like pouring so sweat. So sweaty. They looked so good. Oh, so sweaty. And I decided that, what's his name? Chuan. Was my favorite face. <laughs> and then I, you sent me that Versace on the floor, which is my favorite song off, off of that, that Bruno, Bruno Mars, Mars album. album. It's so good. It's one of my go-to karaoke songs. I love it. And then what's his name? Chuan. Sang <laughs> the shit out of that song. Yeah. I was awestruck. Yeah. Absolutely. Like, how dare you make this stunning vocalist a rapper? A rapper. Because his voice is unreal. It's and so if good. they sang like that all the time, I would be melted in my shoes all the time. Yes. Like, they they should sing more They often. should. Why? They make such <laughs> screamy music. I yes. want I want R&B ballads yeah. from them. Yeah. I want sexy Versace on the floor. Yeah. Let's just kiss till we're naked. Till no, we're naked. don't you dare tell me that. <laughs> like, whoa. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa. So the point of this is that I wanted to Otake. ask. Okay. <laughs> I wanted to ask the Mombebe out there. I want. I want to stand so bad. I need you to understand, like how badly I want to be a Mombebe. However, like we and said, it's not just because that name is fucking. Precious. It's great, <laughs> but their music is yelly, which is also the same thing. Like Armories, we've told you this. Like BTS is too yelly. <laughs> you just said Armories. Oh. So <laughs> That's what people say on the internet sometimes. <laughs> but the point is, like, I don't like yelling. I don't like when people are yelling and, like, the music is so loud. And I feel like so a noisy. lot of the Monster X songs are very noisy. Mm -hmm. However, I really like Jealousy. I really like Beautiful. So I'm asking the mom baby out there what are the b like tell me what the b sides yeah. that i need to cling to are mm -hmm. so that i can keep send me on send us train. those vocal heavy tracks yes. that help us appreciate where's the versace the on the beauty. floor <laughs> exactly yes because i want i want i want it so bad i yeah. love i like i love them as people and i want to love them as a group but man their music bums me <laughs> <laughs> So that's where I'm at with Monster X. I just needed to like make that confession, have a call out, hope to God that someone could help us. 
but let you know that that's that's that's, where we're at right now that's that's where our lives are heading um aside from that today we are going to be talking about idol reality shows yes um and we've mentioned these kinds of tv shows before Mm -hmm. um in a previous episode we talked about variety shows and variety shows are a little bit different from these idol reality shows that we're talking about like how what's the main difference that you would that you would define i mean the like actual difference like on paper is that like technically a reality show is unscripted right we can talk more about what that actually means Mm -hmm. in a second but like where a variety show is like organized and there is a set and like maybe there are established games or an established format of the show. Yeah. So there's not technically a script right. to a variety show, but there is a plan, there's yes. a format and there are segments. Yes. Whereas a reality show is a little less structured. It's a little less structured, but I will just get it out right now because of something that we're going to be talking about next week that I want to defend really hard is just the concept of reality in general. And I think this is like across countries, across whatever, like there's no such thing as a real reality show. Like those are called documentaries (laughs) and you have to film someone for five years and hope you get enough good information. So when you are filming a reality show, yes, you do have to, rent the ice skating rink and then get the members to say hey guys we should go ice skating like you don't you can't actually follow people around it would be a boring because you have to have Mm -hmm. there are writers on reality shows and that there has to be like some kind of story arc for the episode right like 17 needs to go cooking with five dollars yeah 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 exactly there has to be something or else yeah it would be really like you can't just trust people Mm -hmm. no there has to be a (laughs) quote unquote plot like you or a premise yeah not necessarily a plot but it's like okay in this episode you will do this thing and then however you do that thing it just sort of unfolds right. naturally but the preparations that had to go into giving you that situation to be right. doing that thing has to come ahead of yeah time. especially with something like idols where you have to do a lot of planning to make sure like you can't just send 17 to an ice skating rink like right. you need to call ahead and make sure that that ice rink is closed so that you don't form a mob right at this ice and you have to rink. pay off the ice skating yeah, yeah, rink yeah. to use it there's a lot that goes into these things and this mm-hmm. is not k-pop even k-pop specific like you know to bring up like american reality shows i broke my father's heart when i told him that pawn stars wasn't real that like when somebody walks into the pawn stars pawn shop and is like i have this civil war clock like Mm -hmm. that producers found that person with that wall clock a year ago and arranged for them to come because if you actually filmed a pawn shop for a day it would be the most boring television show over and over and over again yes so in that way like just so you know while we're talking about this today like all reality is at least planned a little bit Mm -hmm. yeah it doesn't make it fake right but it isn't entirely quote-unquote Real. <laughs> yeah. So these shows that we're talking about are s- different from variety shows or dramas in the sense that there's no scripted segment. There is no actual script, but it is a planned situation for these people to be in. Mm-hmm. Um, and so the first one that we're going to talk about is a show called Roommate. Yes. This Great. show is no longer on TV anymore. And unfortunately, with the death of Drama Fever, RIP, yeah. um, it is no longer easy to find online. Um, So many of these shows, basically what we're going to do is we're going to list out about nine different TV shows. We will tell you the general premise, notable cast members, and where, if you can find them online. Yeah. So roommate is apologies and uh, that for the next two episodes, we're probably going to make you wish you could watch things you can't watch anymore. And we're sorry for that. But I will tell you (laughs) that today... Roommate is the only show that zero episodes are available okay. online. The rest at least have a few, if not all, of okay. the seasons that's, available. That's that's something yeah. to look forward to. So the first one we're going to mention is called Roommate. Um, this is a show that originally premiered on SBS. It was part of the Good Sunday lineup uh, for their first season. And then the second season, it got switched to like late night on Tuesdays. And, then and the they ratings buried just, it. Yeah, they buried it. 11.15 on a mm-hmm. Tuesday. Yeah, who watches 
TV at that time. I'm fast asleep by then. <laughs> um, but so anyway, it like buried at season two due to certain controversy, which we'll talk about in a moment. And uh, then eventually just sort of like quietly died out. And this mm-hmm. show is no longer on the air. But the basic premise of this show is that 11 celebrities were uh, put into a house mm-hmm. um, to live together. And varying were, careers, yeah. varying ages, all different actors, like different actors, singers, comedians, athletes. idols, athletes. Um, the original age range, just to give you an idea of the season one cast, was 23 to 49. Mm-hmm. And everyone in the show had previously, they either lived alone, they lived with their parents or family members, or they lived with their members. Yeah. So it wasn't, it was specifically a group of people who like never really had just straight roommates. Didn't have roommates. Didn't know yeah, what like, it's like to live. They didn't know what it was yeah. like to live with other people that they weren't sort of like forced to right. live with. Um, and I sort of equated this as like kind of a surreal life. You know, yeah. remember that VH1 show? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like just had like a bunch of random celebrities like thrown into a house. Hey, what happened? That one was a little together. sadder because they were all like, they were like has celebrities. And these yeah, were yeah, more yeah. like current Actually, celebrities. Important. For sure, like still, still. But there was also, and I was going to give you an opportunity to explain this a little more because you have seen, I've seen most of the show. I haven't watched every I've single episode. I've seen it episode. all twice. Um, <laughs> but the original premise had something to do with a romantic incentive. Oh my God, yes. This is such a bummer because it never came it true. It did not come to fruition. But in the in any first way. season of Roommate, they. I feel like they were wanting the whole show honestly disappoints me over overall because it seems like they wanted to do something cool, but they just like chickened out in the mm-hmm. middle. Um, but originally on the original cast of roommate, they like gave them all these like roommate pamphlets and it had like the rules of the house yeah. and whatever. And one of the things in it was like, if two people in this house fall in love we will send you on an all expenses paid vacation. Like, yeah, so all you gotta do this, it's like date someone in the house. They were trying incentive. to encourage it. Was it was like, please fall in love with someone so that you can we can send you on this vacation. Almost like it was prepping for a spin-off show. They like or I feel like they, they I think wanted they it wanted to be. it to be something bigger than it really was. And there were some People, some of the cast members entered that show then with sort of the goal of finding a romantic partner. And then I think, but I think that because that first season cast did have a lot of idols and a lot of them were young, Mm -hmm. that they were like, you know what? I'm not, I'm not allowed to really go for that. And so I think like maybe the premise just didn't really match with the cast that they initially got. And that's why they didn't fully explore that option. But anyway, let's talk about the first season cast. Yeah. So the first season, um, it aired from May 4th, 2014 to September 14th, 2014. And it was Park Baum from To Anyone, Lee Sora, who is an actress, mm-hmm. um, Song Gayon, who is a uh, an MMA fighter, mm-hmm. Shin Song Woo. I don't hot dad is. Hot he was dad. that hot dad, that like hot dad looking guy. He had like long hair and like a beautiful goatee. And he was just like, they're like fun dad guy he was like an actor the older actor he was like okay it almost he was like in his late 40s at the time <laughs> okay and he they called him mom because he like cooked for them yeah and yeah, stuff. yeah i remember that okay and he's different from the japanese guy that was on yes the season two. and he has since gotten married and has a baby now so oh. good for him but good for him he was <laughs> fine uh chanyo from exo huh? was on it hong suyan uh, actress, actress, Nana from After School mm-hmm. and also Orange, Orange Caramel, Caramel. Um, Kang Jun from Surprise, Surprise. Uh, Min Woo, who is an actor, Dong Wook is also an actor, and Sehu, who is Seho, excuse me, uh, who is a comedian Gag and man. like sort of mm-hmm. MC. Um, so those ages ranged from twenty three to forty nine. Big age range, yes. Um, and they just sort of they had like a really fun sort of. Um, I think that the first season did a really good job as far as like the premise of just throwing these people together because like the first, they just sort of like they, the first episode you sort of like meet each person and get to know like where they live and how they live. And then they go into this house together and they sort of like, some of them have really awkward first meetings and then they like kind of, they just sort of get to know each other. And as the show unfolds, like maybe sometimes they have a mission like, Oh, you need to go cook dinner. And so, 
also like the four boys go grocery shopping and the five mm-hmm. girls like go do something else or whatever. But for the most part, it was kind of like free form. Yes. And I sort think of that just first like, seasons felt more like they were just trying to see what would happen if people lived together and it felt slightly more organic in mm-hmm. that way. Um, but the show was also very interesting because. Again, like, it's not 100% real, quote-unquote, in that, like, especially the younger idol kids, especially Chanyol, had so much going on that they would not be around for days and days and days at a time. Mm -hmm. It just sort of seemed like, from what I could gather, that, like, you know, they had rented this house and whoever wasn't busy was sleeping at the house. Mm -hmm. But if you were, like, actually working and had other shit to do, like, you didn't come home to the house because you had other things going on. And there were so many times, like, especially with Chanyeol in particular, so, like, during this first season is when Overdose was filmed and and released, like, that music video. And as we discussed in our EXO extravaganza, extravaganza. uh, Overdose is what preceded the members leaving Mm -hmm. and all of the, like, main EXO drama. So, like, sometimes it's a little bit heartbreaking to watch the first season of Roommate because, like, for example, Chanyo will, like, be there and then he'll leave at a certain time and he doesn't get home until, like, 4 a.m. And then he, like, and then his roommate, who is the, like, hot dad rocker, yeah. um, like, he wakes up and he, like, covers Chanyo with a blanket and, like, makes him breakfast uh-huh. and, like, comes and brings him breakfast and then tells him to, like, go back to sleep. <laughs> and, like, he's really not around for a lot of it because right. he was so busy all the time. Um, and that was true of, like, Bo- Park Balm, like, she would come home at, like, all crazy hours. Um, where They like, had a really fun running gag, though, uh-huh. where the people People who couldn't sleep would wait for Bum to come home and then mm-hmm. they would like get a bunch of like fake microphones and flowers and like ambush her at the door yeah, like paparazzi and be home. like you're home you're home you're home what are where you, have you been like, yeah and it was like a really adorable gag um, but unfortunately this show suffered from some controversy yeah. um, because uh while she was still on the show, Park Bohm was in, was accused of smuggling amphetamines back into Korea from the U.S. Mm. Um, she has since like sort of explained that they were it was like Adderall. She was it was a prescription. Yeah, it was something that like a, an American doctor had prescribed, but that drug was illegal in Korea. Yeah, um, and so she it was fucking tanked her career. It absolutely bless her heart. ruined to anyone. Like it just caused so much. Uh, in my opinion, unnecessary drama, but um, we're not really here to talk about that. Uh, but the point is that, like, Bohm had that scandal, and then members pretty started soon leaving after, EXO. like, yeah, members started leaving EXO, Chanyeol's schedule got crazy, and then a bunch of other members of this cast just announced, like, you know what, I'm going to leave to for- to focus on my career, I have schedule conflicts, etc. About half of the cast left, mm-hmm. and so they brought on a new cast, and they decided to name it as, okay, this is just season two because they had so many new people. Right. Um, so and I feel two, like the second season is, it feels very different from the first two. Totally. Me. And I was going to bring that up. Second season, like, so the new cast, this is from September 21st, 2014 to April 2015. And Dongwook, Sehu, Minyu, uh, Kangjun, Nana are all still on it. They so stayed. five original cast members. Oh, and the... Uh, did we say did we say our fighter girl she stayed? No, she left. She did? She left. Really? Wasn't yeah. she like there? No. Wow. She I left. feel so confused. She was there at the very beginning and then she left. Okay. Cuz Jack cuz she was there to she hit Jackson. Jackson. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. But she <laughs> okay. doesn't stay through the whole okay, season. Okay, okay, okay. Um so then they bring in Yongji who was a new member of uh Kara. Kara. They bring in Gukju, who is a famous comedian. Yes. Jackson from Got Seven. Jong Ok. She was like an older lady yeah, actress. An older and she was actress. Like, oh, she was mm-hmm. fabulous. Yeah, she was fantastic. She repl- she sort of replaced Lee Sora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who as was the, like, the older, older lady, character. lady character on it. Sunny from Girls Generation. Um, Ryohe Ok. Otani. Oh my god, I loved him. He, this Japanese actor. Yeah, he I was so hot. Apologize so for cool. butchering his name, but damn, he was fine. <laughs> oh man, he was hot. He was really fun. Um, he's like very famous in Korea for this like uh t- like period. He did like a period piece where he, he like sword yeah, yeah, fought yeah. on a ship and he's people like were a like, crazy that guy samurai. Is cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um he was awesome. And then Jun Young. 
From G.O.D. Yeah, from Who's G-O-D. like the most American member and he just goes like, yo, bro, what's yo! up? Like that's and his like, whole Him character. and Jackson just like, bro, 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 bro. <laughs> like the whole yeah, season. Yeah, yeah. Um, and so anyway, uh, so season two became very contrived in a way that season one was never. Totally In the agree. sense that like... At first, season one was just like, oh, like, let's make dinner and like, I'm going to go do these things. Like, who wants to come? Like, who wants to go to the grocery store? Who wants to go to the butcher? Like, let's all meet back and make dinner. And then season two was more of like, let's show off all of our special skills. And like, Jackson would do like the same flip over and over again. And then it was like, let's bring over this famous friend. And then like, show off our special tricks. And it just became the second very, season became a parody of itself so quickly, so which a fast. lot of people say like wrecked the show. Yeah, and I love. I mean, I love it all. And when it was still available, I watched it all the time. Mm-hmm. But in the second season, it was like the fifth, like the fifth episode or something. They had like Danny, Danny from God, who I love, and mm-hmm. like another like '90s actress. They like had a couple friends over, and they had like a party upstairs where people were like dancing and showing off and having a good time. And it was a really fun episode. And then it seemed like the producers were like, "This works." So then the show just became yeah. invite someone over and do the exact same thing you did over last week and over and, and it over got again. really old. Yeah, and there were some episodes that were really great like there was that one episode where the girls like went out on a date oh and they had their tarot card date tarot cards read and then the boys like went and did something else and they went skateboarding Mm -hmm. yeah and they had like fun little episodes like that but for the most part it just became like when you look at the wikipedia page in the first season there's only seven guests and like one of the guests is exo and the other one is like beckyun and then there's like two members of two anyone that come and like people that are directly related to the cast members And then the second season, it has, like, 20-something guests, and it's just random fucking people, like, who's free that we can show up in order to gain ratings? Because the ratings were just, like, tanking. Yeah, Um, because they were playing, like, they kept, I remember, because this, this is a, unlike a lot of the things we'll talk about today, like, Roommate is something that I was on board for always, like, I was mm -hmm. into K-pop and watching Roommate as it aired, so I remember them, oh, wait, they moved it to Wednesday, oh, they moved it to Tuesday, oh, it's at 10 o'clock, oh, it's at 11 o'clock, oh, now they're playing it at midnight. Like, Mm -hmm. I watched them wreck this show. Yeah. Um, And, but I really loved it, even when it did get very repetitive, because there were such like great moments on it like there was an episode where i remember all the girls were like drinking in the girls room and Mm -hmm. talking about all the secret relationships that they had had in their careers like girls generation and after school or whatever talking about like oh there's a movie theater Nana was on there for a while yeah or like there's a movie theater 40 minutes outside of town that everyone goes to because like no one goes there and like oh they were talking about their secrets and it felt very real there were a lot of really sweet they surprised jackson with with his mom on Christmas. Oh, that, that was, was so crazy. Sweet. They had a dog mm. that yeah, they, they did, did not dog. fucking take care of. No, they did not. That poor Her little Her name was dog. Cucumber. She was a beagle and she needed... Oh, yeah, she was a beagle. Or a Jack Russell or something. She no, was she one was of those beagle. dogs that needed... Tons of attention, attention. tons of running around, and they left her in a playpen, chained up, and she cried all the time. One time, she was eating rocks in the backyard, and they had to take her to the vet, and the vet was like, her stomach is full of rocks. (laughs) She's just been eating rocks. Um, But she was really cute, but it, like, bummed me out because they, like, did not take care of Cucumber. Yeah. I I wonder what happened to her. I really do. In defense, they did not have time to take care of Cucumber. Because no one, like, Like, really lived there. No one really lived there, except for maybe, like, Lee Sudra. (laughs) Like, other than that, like, no one was really ever there. Um, But anyway, that was really... But I will say, oh, I have to, like, just a little bit. There was also, like, a great ship was born from Roommate. Uh, because Jackson was obsessed with uh, with um, Young G. Oh, yeah. Jack G is what their <laughs> relationship name was called. He would get really, really jealous. Mm-hmm. Like the episode that Got7 came to help them carry coal briquettes or oh, whatever. Yeah. They were all so being really jealous. nice. And he got yeah. really jealous. Um, I totally that was like. very silly. Roommate, I like credit with like my love of Jackson and like. I don't know. It was just... I do think Roommate is what got you on the GOT7 train. I think so, too. For sure. 
because Jackson was like really, really endearing on mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah, he's he just was a very sweet, sweet boy. There is a lot of really sweet moments. I will say though, like as a warning, if you do somehow find this show online and you start to watch it, there are many cringe worthy moments in the first season because of that romance plot line mm-hmm. where like one of the actresses like really wants that that romance plot line to work and she sort of like tries it with a lot of people and she gets very jealous and it gets very awkward in and then ways. there was the episode where like Bum and Minwoo tried to trick all of, they wanted that vacation and they tried mm-hmm. to trick the whole house into thinking that they, they were dating, dating. Yeah, they yeah, like yeah. sent a cacao group message that was like hey guys just wanted to let you know we're dating now and then they tried to pretend for like a whole day that they were together like touching each other's shoulders or whatever and everybody like John Yol was the most like I don't know everybody was very <laughs> skeptical of them and it was really funny um, but yeah I guess that's probably all we should say about Roommate because it's lost at the ages at the moment yeah and... it doesn't it doesn't exist anymore <sighs> but it was good it was a good show it was a good show um, at least at the very least it was well, I I hesitate to say it was a good show because it did kind of tank itself. Um, It was a good premise. It was a good premise and it could have been a wonderful show that could have ran for years if it had been Mm -hmm. handled slightly differently. Because a part of me almost wonders if the producers were like expecting or wanting more drama and what they ended up getting was like 11 very nice people who were very nice to each other. And there wasn't any drama really. Like it was just nice people being nice. Yeah. Um, There was like a little bit of drama in the first episode, in the first season with like Min Woo and Dong Wook and Kang Joon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because like one of the dudes was like kind of rude or kind of haughty or whatever, and they had to have like a discussion about it. Yeah. But it also wasn't anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it was also just no like one was a, hooking mm, up. No one was fighting. They were all just there was having no a cursing, time. no drunken fights. Like, or nothing if there like were, that. they didn't let us have them because that was the other thing. And I will say this applies to a lot of the shows that we are talking about today. Where in the like next week on, they'll show a couple oh, clips yeah. of something that looks so interesting, but you're never going to see it. Never. Yeah. yeah They're yeah. never going to show it to the you. The editing on that show was highly suspicious. Yes. Highly suspicious. And not just because Chanyo would like appear out of nowhere. That's where <laughs> I was. That's how I decided I was convinced that he was a smoker because there would be episodes of like someone coming home at four in the morning and they're in the shoe room taking off their shoes and like Chanyol appears in the front door in his pajamas and he's like, oh, hey. He's like, oh, hey. And I'm like, because you were out yeah, yeah, smoking yeah. in the driveway, weren't you? I mean, the <laughs> the way his voice dropped an octave between Lucky One and Coco Bop is what convinced me he was a Sure. Smoker. But whatever. Next, What's next show? on our list? <laughs> we're going to talk about a show called I Live Alone. Oh, goody. Um, this is a fantastic show. It started in 2013 and it still runs today and you can find it on Vic com under the title Home Alone. Home Alone. Okay. Yes, it has a different title. Um, so this is an NBC show. And um, the premise is based off of the fact that there are 5 million single people in South Korea and that a third of all South Korean entertainers are not only single, but also live alone. So the whole premise of this show is like, let's find famous people who live alone and see what their, and lives, see what are their like. lives are like. So they set up some hidden camera in their in a apartment. Teddy bear. <laughs> yeah, they set up like these hidden cameras around their apartment and then also they give them this enormous teddy bear that's like a has a camera cam. in its eye. Yeah. Like. Um and so they like set up cameras in this in this people's apartments and then they also like have like a crew that sort of follows them throughout the day because obviously like people on their days off don't always just like spend their entire right. day at home. Um and so they follow them on like a quote unquote typical day. Um and this show unlike like roommate has a cast of like MCs. Yes. And so all of the recorded content is actually watched um, by these MCs and the guests. So the cameras will be set up, let's say, like on a Tuesday, right? Mm-hmm. And so they like film, let's say, TVXQ on this Tuesday. Yeah. And then on Friday, TVXQ goes to the studio, sits with the MCs, right. watches the recorded content and comments on it. And the cut together of both of those days is what the episode yes. is. So you get the like action on the Tuesday with and the commentary. commentary of the guests and the hosts. Right. Um, so it's a very fun show. Um, some notable guests that have been on it are, like I said, TVXQ was recently 
recently on it. Um, Great episode. Changmin and Yoonho both on it. Fantastic episode. A lot of shirtless Changmin in it. Yeah. Um, Eric Nam was Shower on it. Shower cameras. Oh, what man. A great Shower show. cameras. What a concept. <laughs> Scandalous. I was shocked. Uh, Eric Nam is on it. Hyolin was on it. Hwasa from Mamamoo. Soyu from Sistar. Amber from FX. Zion T. Uh, Songri from Big Bang. Juno from 2PM. This show, like I said, has been on since 2013. It's still on today. So there's a huge, huge list of notable members that and are on And didn't, it. if i Or I'm, notable idols. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And if I'm remembering correctly, didn't two of the hosts of this program recently fall in love? I have no idea. Okay. I have no information on that. Okay. I'm almost positive that is a fact But now. that's adorable. That two of the, two of the MC cast are like in love now that would be really cute if they no longer <laughs> live alone and now they, now live, they live together oh cute um yeah so that's a show i haven't watched very much of it yeah i've, I've only really seen only like seen i've the... seen the sewing gook episode i've seen the tvxq episodes mm. i also saw on twitter the other day some pictures of key in the street with the i live alone bear so people were thinking that key might he be getting an episode alone. soon mm-hmm. um so we'll have to look out for that I bet that he will because he lives alone and he's in the in the throes of promotion. So yeah. I bet that we will see an I Live Alone episode from him soon. He loves to be on variety shows. Yeah, but it's just um, really fun. It's like fun to see Idol's houses. This is where mm-hmm. I feel like we talked about this on maybe our fan we, episode, but like Idol's yeah. having a million pictures of themselves and be yeah. like, my fans gave me these. Mm-hmm. Like you see those on I Live yeah. Alone. <laughs> and we, we talked about I Live Alone when we like first fell for TVXQ yeah. because when they came back with Love Line and Chance of Love, like this is we this is why they they went on that show yeah. like for the promotion of that album and that's what really got me because and it's so funny to see their dichotomy too because like Changmin lives in such a like like a future space house yeah like he wakes up and he like claps his hands and the shades like come up and he has whatever. one of those kitchens where like it just looks like a plain white room and then you open yeah, it you and like, oh the fridge is back there uh huh like, yeah like things are uh-huh. hidden and he has like a whole wine fridge and, and the like, TV comes down yeah, and like it's all very fancy but then and you then know lives like an old man lives in an antique (laughs) shop like he lives with like high back chairs with like a very long like boardroom dining table yeah and he like brings in all of the the stuffed animals that his fans have given him to like be his little his little audience yeah uh, hilarious and adorable and like also dear god i'm sorry boa if he wakes you up every morning (laughs) um (laughs) <laughs> but anyway <laughs> that's I Live Alone um, great one that's, and you that's said that's that. on Vicky yes it great. is on Vicky it's called Home Alone there's also a lot of clips of that on YouTube that's one of those ones that gets you know YouTube is a great resource for these kinds of things especially for subs because a lot of the subtitle like there are subs on Vicky Vicky is a website that um, has like a community of yes. subbers and so it is fan made subs but they're pretty reliable and they're pretty well done and most of the shows on Vicky are very thoroughly subbed right um, so all of the ones that I recommend to you on Vicky do have subtitles. Sweet. Um, next up on my list is Hyori's be- Bed yes. and Breakfast. Oh my god. This is my bedtime show now. Yeah, I'm going to let you talk about it love this show. I don't know anything about okay. this show. Okay. Let me tell you everything you need to know about Bed and Breakfast. Okay, it's currently on Netflix US. I hope it's also on Netflix around the world, but it is on Netflix US right now. Um, Lee Hyori. We've talked about her a couple of times. She was mm-hmm. in Finkel and then she was an icon. An icon of her own doing. She now lives on Jeju Island with her husband. Jeju is like to the south of South Korea, out in the ocean. It's a beautiful place. Um, it's where Bu Song Kwang is from. Yes. Um, <laughs> and she and her husband, who is like a guitar, like rocker guy, um, they have like a beautiful compound. They rescue dogs. They have like five dogs and like two cats and they love yoga and they love drinking tea and they like leave all their doors open and they just have like a beautiful countryside life. But the premise of this show is that they then try to turn their house into a bed and breakfast mm-hmm. for people who are coming to visit Jeju Island. So in the first season, which is the only one I've watched, I haven't started the second season yet, but in the first season, IU, solo artist IU, comes to live with them and be their staff. Mm -hmm. So you get to, like, see a lot of IU. She's very funny um, and a very, like, 
awkward person, which I think is the funniest thing about idols is like how many of them are really weird when they're not on stage. Um, and I was one of those people. Um, but basically the show is just like people come and they're like, Hey, I'm here in Jeju for two days. And like, sometimes you get to leave the compound with the people. So there's like a tourism aspect of Mm -hmm. it where like these people go hiking or they go fishing and you follow. So I'm sure that Honestly, a lot of the show is paid by like some kind of Jeju tourism board because they are showing off the island like really hardcore. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's also just like a pleasant fucking show. But the people who come are just regular people. Just regular people. They had to apply. Like that was part of it that they bring up a lot in the first season is that they had to apply and get picked because Mm -hmm. it's a TV show. Right. And because it's Shory. Right. Obviously, you have to make sure it's not some like lunatic. Lunatics. But but it's not like celebrities come and stay at this bed and breakfast. Real people. Ayu is there, but she's there to work. And they and call the her rest, Gian because that's her real name. Like, yeah. they don't call her Ayu. Mm-hmm. Like, she's the staff. Yeah, at she's this like show. just a, supposed to be a regular person. And all the people, all the guests are just regular, regular people. Regular people that are on vacation. Um, and it's really pleasant. It's so relaxing. Like I said, I've been watching, like, it's my bedtime show now because sometimes there will be points where, like, Hyori or Ayu are just like, drinking tea between guests coming and it's just the sound of birds chirping and they're drinking tea and the the subtitles are like a lazy day and it like it's just the most relaxing show because they're just like having a great time i love it because i love seeing i love seeing how well adjusted and happy and healthy like hyori is now like Mm -hmm. just to see that somebody who was at the top of her game 15 years ago like the most famous person like to see that she is living like a nice peaceful life with this man who loves her very much is Mm -hmm. like comforting and nice to see the like you know idols don't have to turn out like shit or whatever yeah (laughs) like like, idols can have a nice retirement (laughs) yes and her husband is so like it's so funny because i remember when she got married and I saw the pictures and I was like this guy yeah she's very hot and he is arguably not and it's like (laughs) really this guy but after watching the show I'm fully in love with him I totally get why she loves him like (laughs) he is wonderful he's like the he's just like the husband anybody would ever want like he's so helpful and he's handy and he's kind and he's funny and like He's just great. They're just great. They're like lovely, fun people. They get really candid. I like laughed so hard at this episode the other day. They had a couple staying with them who were like, they were getting, it was their first outing since they'd had a baby. Mm. And they were sitting at the breakfast table and Hyori was talking to the wife about like how much your boobs change or whatever (laughs) as you grow. And the wife was like, oh, I had a baby and like, oh, my boobs are all weird. And Hyori was like, mine used, mine have just disappeared. Like I used to have great boobs, but I think I showed them off too much and now they've served (laughs) their purpose. So they left me like they're gone now. And she was like, but it's okay because only one person has to see my boobs. So I don't mind. (laughs) And then her husband was like, well, as that person... I have to say that I miss them. And then she like <laughs> sat very still and like looked at him and she was like, you know what? Sometimes I see you getting into the shower and I look at your butt and I just go. <sighs> <laughs> <laughs> and it's just like, it's the fun. It's a wonderful show of people just like living. And their I just lives. wish that butt is where it <laughs> used to be. <laughs> It's lower than when it's we lower first than got it married. Used to be, yeah, <laughs> but they're really funny and sweet and good, and it's just like a nice. It's just a nice fucking show, and I can't recommend it like highly enough. Like, it's and so that's good. all on Netflix, so that one yeah. at least here in the U.S. is easier to easy find. to get. Okay, um, the next show we're going to talk about is called, and these are really in no particular order. Yeah. Um, the next show we're going to talk about is called It's Dangerous Beyond the Blankets. Okay. Um, this is an NBC show. It currently has two seasons of it. Ten of these episodes, which is um, the second season. So season two in its entirety is on Vicky. Okay. It is available with English subtitles. Um, the first season is really just four episodes. Um, that was like a Chuseok special and these like three That's honestly pilot episodes. I, a lot of reality or like I feel like a lot of Korean variety and reality shows start as Chuseok specials and yep. it's like, does anyone care? Should we make more? Oh yeah, that will come this? up. We'll, we'll yeah. I'm gonna bring that up in a couple of different yeah. um uh, shows that are like, oh, this is like a special holiday 
thing. Um, but anyway, It's Dangerous Beyond the Blankets is a show where the whole premise of it is that they take celebrity homebodies, like people who... Boys uh, only, though, Yeah, right? boys only. Boys only. So they take celebrity homebodies, actors and singers, and uh, also some athletes as well. Um, celebrity who claim to be homebodies and they put them together to live in a house and then they force them to go on a trip. Okay. So they like they have take, to leave. Yeah, they have to leave the house. So they do initially live in a house together and they like meet all the whole group okay. and then they get grouped into four to six people and those four to six people have to go on a trip together. Got it. So the first season had an actor named Lee Sang-woo uh an idol named Yong Jun Hyung, who's from Highlight, a singer named Park Jae Jong, a singer named Jo. What did I say? Jung Chi, Shuman from EXO, and Kang Daniel from 101. So these six boys, six men, were on the first four episodes, which technically count as season one. That debuted in August uh, 2017 and ran until October. Like I said, there was only four episodes and three of them, they called three of them pilot episodes and then one of them was a Chuseok special. So I think it was just sort of like... That sounds like just like a massive pilot. Yeah, just like a one-off, like, okay. hey, would anyone care if we did this? <laughs> okay. And I I think like the first four episodes, which are not available on Vicky, I'm very sorry to tell you, but the first four episodes were mostly of them like living in the house and okay. seeing like how do they get along. And then season two started in April of this year, 2018, and ran until July. Um, all of these episodes are available on YouTube. And it was the original six members plus rapper Loco. We've talked about him a bunch. Icon member Junho. Okay. Winner member Minho. Oh, the winner Mino. Okay. Uh -huh. Winner Mino, Mark from NCT, okay, rapper Gray, talked about him too, and two other Kim Min Sooks. Wow, one of whom is an actor and one of whom is an Olympic speed skater. So they picked them purposefully so there'd be three Kim Min Sooks in the house and everybody I, could be weirded out by that. that. Maybe I don't, know. I don't know why you would have three Kim Min Sooks purposeful. all at once. Like it must be purposeful because especially like once they decide to group them into groups of four or six and then send them on a trip together, they put all three Kim Min Sooks in the same yeah. group. And I'm no, like, why? Purposeful. Why would you do that? <laughs> so anyway, Schumann is always credited as Schumann on that show. He's not credited that. as Min Sok. <laughs> looking at um, this, I'm looking at the Wikipedia right now and it's like episode features Kim Min Sok, Kim Min Sok, Song Min Ho, Kim Min Sok. <laughs> yeah, it's ridiculous. <laughs> it's so stupid. Um, but the highlight of this show, according to many, many fans, is, and I've only seen a few episodes, but the highlight of this show is the relationship between Shuman and Kong Daniel. Okay. Um, because they are roommates. Um, they share a room. Kong Daniel is very messy. I and Schumann see. is Schumann seems very, very anal. not. He yeah. is very, very clean. And he has uh, a wife and four kids to look yeah, after. He has Gotta to keep stay his clean. house clean. He's he like he keeps a tidy <laughs> house, that one. Um but anyway, so like the very first episode where they like meet, I think it's uh Daniel is asleep and Schumann comes in and he like is trying to be really quiet. He like doesn't mean to wake him and then he accidentally does and Daniel is like like from his bed like bows and is like very very starstruck um, because this started like right after Coco Bop so right. like it was you know like EXO's always been a very big fucking deal but then also like they're hot off the presses right sort of. and um, 101 was super new at the time 101 was super new at the time um, and so like Daniel was very like Starstruck, starstruck. Um, to be sharing a room with Schumann and sort of like fawned over him to the point where where Schumann was like, "Can you just go back to sleep? Like it's fine. Like just <laughs> just chill out and." Yeah, Calm down, yeah, yeah. little one. Um, and they're just like, they're very adorable. Um, but so, like, a lot of people watch this show for, I think they call it Shunyol. Sh Shunyol. Shunyol. I don't know. Something. The, the pronunciation of that fan name is, it, is weird. Shunyol, um, I think, is what they say. But anyway, uh, they're just celebrity homebodies from all walks of life getting together and going on trips. And That's great. They're just nice people being nice to each other and... <laughs> It's yeah. nice. I like this is like a lot of these shows we're talking about today. Like they're all just like nice. Like I just yeah, like to see I feel people like having a nice time. That's a really like it's 
It's funny because I I personally really hate American reality Me too. TV shows. Like I have my sister loves like Is she a real housewives yeah. and stuff like that. And she'll she'll watch all kinds of shit. Like she watches that terrible like below deck show and it, I don't know. It's I don't like, even know oh, what that it's is. It's terrible. Is she terrible a ninety day TV fiance shows. person? Like, no, I don't think she watched that, but she would. <laughs> she would. Like that kind of shit. It's just like trashy reality TV yeah. where half of the conversation is bleeped out because it's yelling at each other right. and like it's just angry drama all the time and I hate it. Yeah. I hate watching it. It stresses me out. It makes me upset and like Korean reality shows at least in this scenario when it deals with idols it's usually just like nice people being yeah. nice in different situations and sometimes that situation has them like trying to accomplish a certain task and sometimes it's just them like living in a house together and it's just pleasant. totally i uh i'll i'll save more of my thoughts about this until the next episode but i also i also agree yeah so there's like a more there's just a more like Pleasant vibe. Pleasant is a good word. To a lot of to a lot of Korean reality shows. A lot of Korean reality mm-hmm. shows are extremely awkward. Like I don't think they're always pleasant. Like I think there's a lot of cringing involved, but I feel like it's extremely different. Whereas like nah, I'll just get into it now. Like, for example, like on The Bachelor, that's the on- like the only American reality show that I fuck with is The Bachelor's series. My husband and I love fucking Bachelor. Um just for that very reason of like, look at these dumb people like wrecking themselves and looking mm. so stupid on TV. There's like a kind of like anger involved in it. Yeah. And I've- the Bachelor people who make the show have no interest in making any of those people look good. Mm -hmm. And so they're, you know, they're doing everything they can to make it traumatic. Whereas I feel like with these Korean shows, like, especially when there's idols on the line, they are not to be very careful to protect people and you can't. So especially (laughs) if there's idols on the line, because their fans will come for you with a vengeance if you make them look bad. And so a lot of these, like, the purpose of something like The Bachelor is to catch people in shitty situations. And make situations them look stupid and, and be like, how stupid and be they like, are. Haha, look at these idiots. Whereas, like, these shows, it's much more of, like, these are people, celebrities that you love and you want to know what their normal life is like. So let's give you an opportunity to take a peek into their normal right. life. Exactly. In a, in a more respectful way. Yes. Um, but and they often, I just will say, because I think it's one of my favorite, like, uh, captions that comes up on Korean reality that I never see anywhere else is when the person does something that is so crazy that they can't ignore it. And the caption is like, we're sorry, we couldn't protect you. Like when someone makes such an ass of themselves that they have to show it, but the caption is like, yes. I'm sorry, we couldn't protect Those you from yourself. moments where they're like, we tried to protect your image and you, and you ruined it, it for yourself. <laughs> like <laughs> we tried. Yeah. And I love those moments on those reality shows where the where the other people in the show are like, oh, but your image. And they look at them and they're like, oh, shit, right. I just ruined my image, didn't I? And they're like, yeah, it's too late now. Like, Sorry. That can't be fixed in editing. Moving on. Moving on. Um, What's our next show on the list? Our next show is called Unnie's Slam Dunk. Oh my Dunk. god, yay, I love this one. Um, This is a KBS show that on Vicky is called Sisters Slam Dunk. Um, You can't, so all, there's two seasons of this show. All of the show is on Vicky, but it is under separate like categories okay. they so they have Unny Slam Dunk the first season and then they have season 2 as like a separate entry yes. or whatever um so they do have all of the episodes they're just not all together it is also all on kbs's youtube channel and subtitled awesome so this one this is one that's super easy to find yeah this one this uh, is our first super easy to find yeah the <laughs> others are a little bit harder but this one's easy to find um so the first season of sisters slam dunk the premise of it was that they had they threw these like what's he one two three four five five 
five uh, celebrities, well, originally six, they threw these like six celebrities together. And the purpose was to fulfill a dream that each one of them had. Mm -hmm. Um, So there was one whose name was Kim Sook. Uh, She wanted to get her bus driver's license. And then uh, another one named Min Hyorin, she wanted to debut as a girl group. Um, More on that in a moment. (laughs) Then there was Jessie. Um, She wanted to complete three missions from her dad, one of which included a fake wedding. Right. Um, And they surprised her with her dad in an episode and it is, oh my God, the tears. So sweet. Oh my God, the tears. I love it. Um, then they had uh, Hong Jin Kyung, who wanted to produce a short film, and then they entered that film into a festival. Um, Ra Miran, she wanted to build a restaurant, hold a photo shoot, and produce a Christmas carol. And then there was also Tiffany from Girls' Generation. She was originally on this show, and then they had to ask her to leave due to controversy of like a social media post that she made that had she was wearing like a t shirt that had no, no, no. It was a Snapchat filter. I'm like, still, oh, yeah, I'm yeah, yeah. still mad about this. Snapchat so I filter. remember all of the yeah. details. So she was originally on the cast for the first season. And then like halfway through the first season, she posted this post on Instagram. Well, there was something on Instagram as well as Snapchat. Right. But like there was a Snapchat filter that used that the uses Japanese that imperial flag, mm-hmm. which like in Asia is like equivalent to a Nazi flag. So I to this right. day blame Snapchat. Yeah, it for is. putting that in there like fun Japan filters, they should have. But whatever. People I mean, were as someone who lived in Korea, she should have known True. That, that was inappropriate. True, more so than the <laughs> California bros who, who built make Snapchat. Snapchat. <laughs> but um, so, like, I feel like that's a bit ignorant true, true, on true, our true, own true. shoulders. True, true, true. Um, but anyway, so she used this uh, symbol, which is like basically a World War II Japan flag, and which is like obviously controversial for a lot of different reasons that we're not going to get into today um but anyway she she was asked to leave um but she is in their music bank performance of shut up shut up um which is their girl group so like like i said min hyorin she her dream was to debut as a girl group they called themselves unis Mm -hmm. um which means sisters and so their fan club name is dong sangs which means little sister little sisters um which is very cute so the song that they uh produce the basically like when she said that she wanted to be in a girl group um the mission became that they were going to uh create and like practice and produce a song which was produced by jyp and then perform it on music bank that shows that song is called shut up the right. music Bank performance is adorable right. they do a great job it's really cute i just want to mention because i love it and i love love just so you know min hyorin is Young's wife <gasps> oh <laughs> I didn't know that. Cute. Yeah. So Love it. there's that too. Anyway, <laughs> he's not on the show at all. That's just a fun fact. Um, anyway, the season, the second season of the show yes. focused on the girl group theme because right. like when after the episodes where that revolved around her dream coming true, it was just like a big hit. Like, yeah, people, people really this. liked it. I remember all the end of the year shows. They were like performing shut up everywhere. Like mm-hmm. there was a bit of a like cultural kerfuffle about like people loving the honey show so i only saw a handful of episodes of the first season like i watched the jesse one because i like people were crying there was another episode where they all gave each other weird ugly makeovers that was really funny that i watched but the second season i watched religiously i like watched every single second of it so the second season the theme of the entire season is this girl group yes and the honey's like taking but it's new new people new people two remaining the two comedians Mm -hmm. stayed yeah two Two, the two comedians stayed, and then they added um, one, two, three, four, five people, mm-hmm. who none of whom I was really familiar with. Okay. Um, do you know? Yes, I can tell you about them because I watched the season. Okay. Because so I have their well. names, but I can't tell you so, about them. So, Kang Wan, she is an actress. I knew her from the Lady season of Real Men. Okay. Um, the only thing I can like say about her is that Real she's, Men like, is a show in which uh, people go and they do. We like, talked about it on our army camp. episode. Yeah, it's yeah. like a boot camp show. Just a reminder. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, she cried so much on that show, and it was like very infuriating. She refused to do things. She would just like break down and cry, and it was kind of annoying. Um, 
but she is like legally she's one of those people like Dio that is blind but refuses mm. to wear glasses because they make her look ugly so she like quote unquote quote unquote so she like can't see it's very frustrating but she was there then there was Han Chae Young who was like this gorgeous model I think she was a model. Maybe she was mm-hmm. an actress. Maybe she was both. She was just like really pretty. Um, Hong Jin Young, who is our trot singer girl. We've talked about oh, her yeah. a bunch of times. Mm-hmm. Minzy, who is the maknae of 2NE1. Oh, okay. And then Somi, who was in IOI and all of yes. those things. Okay. We've mentioned Somi she was the as youngest. somebody who has a very... A pretty substantial career at this point, but has never been in a permanent group. A, yeah, hasn't had permanent idol success. Yes. She was originally in IOI and then she was in Unis and she's been in like a couple different things. I, she comes up a few times yeah. actually in my list. Um, but anyway, uh, so the second season revolved around this girl group and they performed more than once on yes. Music Bank and it was they just did like a whole fun, music video. Yeah. It was really fun. I loved that season because. Uh, it felt the same. It felt similar to Roommate in that, like, the age ranges were so different. There were, like, women who were approaching 50 and Somi, who is 16, 16. Mm-hmm. that, like, there was just, like, this very fun, like, sisterhood element to it. And it was yeah. also really nice to see them work so hard because, like, Minzy and Somi were, like, amazing, but the rest of them had never danced, never sang before. Mm-hmm. So there was, like, a lot of teamwork involved. People had to work really, really hard to just, like, learn how to bo- – there was a whole episode where they tried to teach people how to body roll. <laughs> and like that was a massive body rolls are really hard yeah there was also a really funny and kind of sweet and like a lot of people said it was creepy and I was like you're no fun but so they had a vocal teacher and Somi had a crush on him and they like really played up how much she had a crush on him mm. he got he gets married before the season is over oh okay like they find out that he like has a fiance and is getting married or whatever and everyone gets disappointed about it and people were like this is creepy she's a teenager and I was like it was fun yeah. They were just having fun. Mm-hmm. They weren't actually trying to sell No, her up with they this just adult. like thought it was yeah. funny that she would get so flustered around because she was yeah. a teenager and like being around teenagers is funny. Yeah, so. especially <laughs> when like like I remember being a teenager and ha- like I remember being a senior in high school and having a really hot creative writing teacher and our first day of class I literally giggled like a schoolgirl at everything he said whether it was a joke or not oh I just like nervous giggled and it was so embarrassing and very loud and I just like couldn't help it or control it and if he asked me to do anything I just said yes whether I had the time to do it or not right. I just like was like okay whatever you want <laughs> and if I was an adult at my current age and I saw I was like working or friends with a child who was behaving in that way I would have teased the shit out of myself <laughs> like it's just fun it's fun it's funny it's yeah. fun so I think Honey Slam Dunk was great fun and it's really easily available so like mm-hmm. I say of a lot of the things we're recommending like you should give this one a watch because it's easy to do and it was like wholesome and girl power and fun and I yeah. really liked it another fun girl Girl Power Show is called Idol Drama Operation yes. Team. There are only four episodes of this on Vicky. Because this was like a little, this felt like a Chuzuk special to me in that well, how short it is. This was on Naver. Okay. Um, which is so, Google. Yeah, which is basically Google, and they have like a Naver TV cast and V app. So it was more of like almost a V live kind of thing. Yeah. Um, it was like a an internet special sort of show. Mm-hmm. Um, but it had seven girl group members. And the whole premise of the show was that these seven idols were coming together to create their own drama series based off of fictional versions of themselves. Right. Um, and so the show that they wrote and produced was called Let's Only Walk the Flower Road. It did air as a drama. Um, it's bad. I watched this show and could not get through the drama. Like, I yes. liked the show, but the drama was rough. Well, the drama is very hard to find. Okay. So I, I couldn't find the actual drama anywhere. I could only find the idol drama yeah. operation team episodes, which is maybe for the best. Probably. Um, the cast of this show, they are a group which they dubbed themselves Girls Next Door. Yes. Um, they did not, they're not a, 
idol group. But they the did sense. do like a music bank or something. Like they yeah, did they something. did at least one performance together. Um, and I think it's because they produced a single their, for the OST. The show. Yeah, they yeah, did yeah. like the the, the original soundtrack or whatever for their show, and they performed that on a music bank or something. But anyway, it's Moonbyul from Mamamoo, Solgi from Red Velvet, Sohi who is from IBI and CIVA. Siva? I don't know. Sure. Diana, who is from Sonamu. Yua, who's from Oh My Girl. Sujong from Lovelies. And, and Somi, Somi again. From IOI and Unis. Unis. Um, and so these girls got together. And I remember, I mean, I never watched the so- show, so you can tell us yeah. more about it. But I remember that you recommending it to me as a really interesting and candid look at what idol life is yes. like. Because that was the point of the drama as they wanted them to write about. So the point of the drama, I seriously only watched an episode and a half. It was so bad I couldn't stand it. But <laughs> I think the premise of the drama is that they were like a girl group who was on the cusp of debuting. Mm-hmm. So it was like they were trying to use aspects of their own lives. And I remember in one of the earliest episodes when they are all they all like meet at a restaurant or whatever, and they realize very quickly that like Moonbyul and Sulgi have cell phones and have oh. lives and have friends that are boys and have like that the uh, that so many of the other girls are truly literally kept in dungeons and have no yeah have no connection to the outside world. Like one of the girls confesses early on that like she got in, you know, like basically like idle grounded for months because she had a, like a burner phone under her mattress so she could call her mom Mm -hmm. and someone found it and like destroyed it and punished her. Like, so there was like upsetting elements of it, but like, it was also just like very interesting to see how like girl group members of varying, like, successes and companies and fames and whatever and like how they all sort of deal with things Mm -hmm. and like you know some of the girls were like very very hopeful and some of them seemed kind of burnt out and like some of them it was just really interesting because they all had such different views on the exact same industry based Mm -hmm. on how they are but it was viewed in it. also, and correct me if I'm wrong, but also kind of nice in the sense that, like, there's this sisterhood element yeah. of, like, all the, where, like, Moonbyul and Solgi are, like, wildly more famous than pretty much any Anyone of else. the other cast. And, like, they all sort of bonded together and had, and, like, shared these experiences and supported each other in, like, very pleasant ways. Yeah, no, it was, like, totally nice. It was, like... Yeah, the drama, like I said, the drama that came from it was pretty unwatchable. <laughs> Sorry, but like, yeah, they, I mean, I guess that's what's hap- what happens if you have people like right because i remember I mean, in the they, first they, episode, they had to write it yeah. themselves. Like, the, you know, they're not writers. They're not writers. And in the first episode, I remember there being like so much about a mean manager not letting someone eat. That I was like, this is a personal oh, issue upsetting. that you're like working out in this script. So that was the weird part about it too, is that they like they seem to really want to try to say something about the lives that they lead, but like had to be really sneaky about mm-hmm. it. And like, I don't know. It was just yeah. very interesting. And I loved I loved the stories about how often Mama Moo doesn't give a fuck. Like that was when I learned that they like how often they yeah. sneak out. Like they were ve- <laughs> Moonbyul Moon Be- Moon was very much like, here's the deal. But she also said on that show that like, you know, that they didn't let her sing. Mm-hmm. Like you you got I feel like you got a lot of like venting from everyone in every aspect. Like, you know, you look at Moon Beal like, oh, she's in Mama Moo. Like she's doing great. She's their rapper. They all love her. But she was like, well, you know, I wanted she, to be a singer. She's a very good singer. Yeah. But she basically said on this show that they told her, well, the other three are better than you. Mm-hmm. So you have to be the rapper. Mm-hmm. Sorry. Yeah, um, and so. now that Mama Moo has significant fan base and acclaim, now she has the ability. She to sort of like, like earned the freedom yeah, yeah, yeah. to do. She put out a little mini album which featured Solgi on it. Yeah, they um, because they became friends on this fun buddies. show. There's a lot of people who ship them together, and I support <laughs> that. Um, they would be a really cute couple, but whatever. Like friends, just friendship is nice whatever. too. <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, so like she sort of like we've mentioned, like had to 
earn her creative freedom mm-hmm. in a sense, but it sheds some light into like the darker realities of what it is to be an idol. Yeah. Um, and so that's an interesting like aspect of idol reality that we, yeah. that we don't always get. Yes. And that a lot of these shows don't shine a light on sure. because a lot of it is more of just like, let's throw you, let's take these idols and like throw you into a situation. Yeah. And I think that was a, an interesting thing about both this show and roommate and like unease is like having people together that work at different companies that have different levels of fame, like their experiences are all very different and mm-hmm. having listening to them talk about those things was very, very interesting. Yeah. Cause like a show that's just about Mama Moo, they're not going to be able to say, you know what I mean? It's like someone else coming yeah. in like, oh, you guys like sneak out and go to the club. Like, I can't call my mom. Like, yeah. oh, those are very different. Mm-hmm. Those are very different experiences that you're yeah. having. Yeah, because they're from different companies. They're from different levels of companies, like different tiers, uh-huh. et cetera. Um, so they they bring a lot of like interesting uh, truths. True to their show but uh, on the other but like I said most of the re- idol reality TV shows are not about that it's mostly about like taking a group of celebrities and throwing them into a situation and seeing like hey what's going to happen if we put you in the jungle which brings us to our right. next <laughs> show which is called Law of the Jungle um, they, this show you can watch um, this show has been around since 2011 it just recently aired its 300th episode in 2018 so there's a ton of like backlog yeah. episodes from this. Only 75 of those episodes are currently available on Vicky with English subtitles. It does update regularly. So like the more recent episodes or whatever, like are, are continuously mm-hmm. put on to Vicky, but really only like the current to th- the 2017 to current ep- seasons are available on Vicky. Got it. Um, But so The Law of the Jungle is basically, it's a show on SBS in which celebrities are sent to survive in various remote locations around the world. Not only Asia, but also they go to Mexico, they go to Australia, there's a segment in in Antarctica. Um, They go all over the world. Uh Um, The only regular cast member is a man named Kim Byung-man. He's a comedian and it was originally called like Kim Byung man's law of the jungle oh, okay. because it's like his thing um he so he basically takes a group of celebrities to a remote location and they have to hunt they have to prepare meals they have to create their own shelter and they just have to like survive and they just cry a lot yeah they i have just... never seen an episode of law of the jungle but i have seen many a clip of people i love crying on law of the jungle I mean, that's they have, what I've seen. If they have to hunt and build their own homes, like, yeah, I'm worried for them. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I'm worried for Chanyol having to hunt something in oh the Oh my God, jungle. he cried so much. I on bet his he law did because he's a little bitch. <laughs> <laughs> he, if he's not in a recording studio, he doesn't know what to do. Yeah. That's my impression of Chanyol. True. <laughs> Anyway, um, they also have, like I said, um, holiday specials. They do a special one called Law of the Jungle W, in which it's all females. Um, They do, which is not to say that they never have female idols or celebrities on their cast. They do often have at least one woman on the cast. But Law of the Jungle W is where everyone on it is a woman. Okay. And that comes out on the Solal and Chuseok holidays. And then they also did a Law of the Jungle K for Korean. Korean New Year where they had celebrities and their kids oh, fun. go into the jungle, which is fun. Um, it is a highly, highly acclaimed Korean TV show. It won so many awards. It has won page. SBS Entertainment Awards every single year since its premiere in 2011. It wins multiple awards every year. It's nominated for multiple awards every year. Um, like I said, Vicky has its current season um, starting in 2017 where they uh, were in Indonesia, but the episode so, excuse me, the episodes take place in a couple different places in the like uh, in the 75 right. episodes that are included on Vicky. And I just I started to write down the whole cast and then I realized like how many different casts they have. Yeah. And I was like, OK, never mind. Here are just some notable members. Jin from BTS, Gongmyun from Surprise, uh, Songyul from Infinite. 
uh, Kang Taeon from For Prize, Kong Ri from Nine Muses, two BT, uh, B2B members, an FT Island, Mark from God7, So Yu from Sistar, Yunji from A Pink, Hani from EXID, Mingyu from Seventeen, Solgi from Red Velvet, Tony An from HOT, All of Shinwa, Lucas from NCT, Doyun from Weki Miki, all of these and more are currently featured in the episodes that are on Vicky right wow. now. That doesn't even include the previous seasons where people like Chanyeol were on Oni it. Oni was on it yeah. once. Mm-hmm. Seong was on it once. Like, yeah, it's so, a really popular It's been show. on since 2011, and it's always been very popular. So, like, I would suggest if you're looking for an older... If you, like, go on Wikipedia, then there's a whole huge, enormous list of, like, every single person who's ever been on it. And I would just suggest, like, looking on YouTube to to see if there's an English subbed version of it because YouTube has a surprising amount of these like full episodes right. and Vicky just do- only has the most recent ones. Right. Fair enough. Mm-hmm. So on that idea of now we're sort of switching to shows that are mostly available on YouTube. The next one I have written down is Hello Baby. Hello Baby. One of my absolute favorites. We've talked about Hello Baby. We have a couple definitely of times talked before, about Hello Baby still. before. Um, Hello Baby was a KBS show. Um, the premise of the show was for celebrities, specifically idols, to raise a child five years or younger to see if they'll make good parents. Um, there are seven seasons of Hello Baby. The first one started, it went from 2009 to 2013. Um, The first season was uh, Girls Generation. They had 22 episodes in which they raised an infant, like an actual tiny baby. baby. Every other season only had 12 episodes. So okay. They were really long. Every other episode, every other season only had 12. Um, the second season, 2010, was shiny. All five members o- raised together a two-year-old. Um, he was now a big boy I and he... Know. And he's last still night he a was big live fan of shiny himself watching Shiny. <laughs> he goes to their concerts. <laughs> he supports them on V Live and Insta Live it's all the, the time. Best. It's really fucking cute. <laughs> um, and on the that season, the shiny appas, like they made a little um time capsule for him to open when he's 21. And I'm very excited for for him to open that eventually. (laughs) Anyway, uh, the third season, 2010, uh, was Tiara. And they had to raise three toddlers, um, three siblings, which seems like a lot. Um, 2011 was an interesting season in that they had Sistar as the collective moms and Lee Tuk from Super Junior as the dad. uh, Weird. uh, Yeah, of this one kid. It was very weird. Very very strange that they like had so many people. four moms and a yeah and a dad from a, from a different company a different company in a different group weird uh, all taking care of this one baby who knows I don't know why they chose to do that but they did the next season uh, had in black on it um, they raised three kids all of whom were multicultural that was like the theme of that season okay they so they had a Vietnamese Korean uh, child a Canadian Korean child and a French Canadian uh, excuse me I just said what French did I just say? Korean child is what you mean. Did I say Canadian Korean? You said Canadian Korean previously. Okay. I, then I said French Canadian. I meant French mm-hmm. Korean. So Vietnam, Vietnamese Korean, Canadian Korean, French Korean. Yeah, there you go. Three babies. Um, all raised by M. Black. Sixth season had B1A4 and all of the members of B1A4 are from the countryside. So the theme of ah. this season was that they had two kids. They were raising two little babies from the countryside and the theme was get to know soul. So it was like the the B1A4 dads like showing these kids around I the city. And then the last season featured a boy group named Boyfriend, which I'm not familiar with, and they raised two toddlers as well um every episode had basically followed like the same structure and that they were they had like a mission or like an activity that they were supposed to do with the kid and then at the end of the episode the kids choose the like quote unquote best 
and worst parent and right. then like the best parent gets like a prize and the worst <laughs> parent has to like clean up or whatever. Right. Um most of these seasons are available on YouTube fully subbed. Oh, that's nice. Um Shiny B1A4 and M Black, their entire seasons are available on YouTube. Girls Generation, I didn't do a lot of digging into it, but I know that at least the very first episode is available on YouTube as Great. well. Great. Anything to say about Hello Baby before we move on? Just that it's wonderful. I've really only seen the shiny season and I watch it whenever I'm sad. Yeah. Um, so that's good. It's fantastic. <laughs> the shiny Hello Baby is one of the first things I watched that like made me fall for shiny. And Hello Baby is the reason I love Mino so much. Yeah. Um, he had that crazy ring ding dong mullet and I like didn't care because he was just so he's so good with children. Yeah. It's like. It's unbelievable right. how good he is with children. But then and that's just, also like a funny element of it is like where we saw like Mino being very good with the kid. Onu was terrified of the kid. He continues to be terrified of kids. He's not good with kids. He doesn't like not being good around with them. children. So that's fun. Like that's funny too. Yeah. Like it's it is all very fun. funny because they're like very, <laughs> there's so many moments where like the kid would run toward Onu and Onu would like back away. Yeah. <laughs> like be very upset. <laughs> he was coming right. toward him and then Mino on the other hand was like so preciously good with him the scene where he teaches yu gi how to brush his teeth has like engraved itself in my soul right. and I'll remember it until the day I die I'll like be lying on my deathbed and just like be like yu gi brush his teeth remember that one time yeah and Mino the wake helped up him brush his teeth uh, spoil <sighs> spoiler alert for my recommendation wake up song <laughs> oh that's good. We'll talk about that. We'll talk about end. it later. Okay. So okay. Hello, baby. We, we got to move on. All right. Uh, next up, this is our last show that okay, we're going to talk about we've been um, going with, the, forever. with the exception of some uh, shows that are like YouTube exclusives. Um, so my next one is called One Fine Day. Okay. This is a show that is not available on a lot of um, typical websites like Vicky. It was not ever on Drama Fever because it's produced by NBC Music. So it's kind of like a supplemental music show in mm. the sense that it doesn't have anything to do with music. They don't ever have to perform on it, but basically like NBC goes to a group and is like, "Hey, surprise, you are going to be on a, you're going to get a vacation." And so then they get to go on vacation and a lot most of the time, most of the seasons, the like general premise is that you as an idol group get chosen to go on one fine day and then either like that you are told hey congratulations you're gonna go on an all expenses paid vacation to bali and then they like go and they have a great time and it's very relaxing and it's like a vacation it really is like yeah okay you have to go with these with right. these cameras but in the larger sense of the thing it's like a fun time mm -hmm. um or you get to choose where to go. Like in Shiny, they said like, hey, congratulations, you're going to go on one fine day. Where do you want to go? And each member got to choose a place anywhere in the world where they wanted to go. So right. like Jean Young went to Japan, uh, Onu went to Thailand, Ki and Mino went to London, and Tamin went to so Switzerland because um, he wanted to go skiing or something. <laughs> um, but anyway, so uh, this show is it's still going on they've had a few different seasons and most of the seasons are entirely subbed by fans on youtube so i highly recommend just typing in your like group's name plus one fine day and it will show up mm -hmm. um so shiny had a season in 2013 b1a4 had a season in 2014 that same year vix also had a season super junior had a season the following year in 2015 which also gave girls day g friend and AOA, their own seasons. So 2015 had four different ones. BAP had a season in 2016. And then 17, the gr group 17, first had a season in 2016. And they got really excited. They were like, oh, my God, hooray, we get to go on one fine day. They were so excited. And then and it was like at the very beginning of their sort of career. They were like very overworked. They were so excited to go and relax. And then they realized that they were on the one fine day castaway edition <laughs> and these poor overworked idols had to go on this tiny ass fishing village and they had to work for 
everything. <laughs> they had to cook everything over a fire. Is that the fire. one where they were like, put your suitcases in the trash and yes. whatever you can fit in this Ziploc bag is what you yes. can take? So the very first episode, <laughs> they learn that they're going on one fine day and they're so excited. They're like, oh my God, I want to do this. I want to do this. I want to go here. I want to go on the beach. I want to relax. I want to go to a spa. And they spend the whole day and they pack their suitcases and they bring such fun stuff. And then they go to the ferry. And before they get on the ferry, the producers say, you have one minute to take out as much as you can from your suitcase. That's all that you can get on the boat that you can take on the boat with you. And then when they got so they're like rapid fire, freaking out, ripping things out of their suitcases. Song Chul, the like beautiful leader that he is, immediately tells them, put your coats on, layer, layer, put your coats on, be efficient. They're just like grabbing random (laughs) shit. And then they like run onto the ferry. And as soon as they get onto the ferry, the producers say, "Okay, all of the things that you grabbed from your suitcase, if they don't fit into this gallon size Ziploc bag you can't take it with you oh God, and then they had torture. to strip down even more yeah and then they get onto the island and they have to wake up at like 6 a.m to go fish for their meals they had a really hard time on this island like they had a good time in the end but ultimately a very difficult time and a time that they expected to be very relaxing so they are the only group that's ever gotten to be on one fine day twice yeah because one fine day I think felt bad yeah and so then they came back and they said okay now you get to do one fine day in Japan and you get to spend a week or so or whatever like for real this time you just get to have fun Um, both of those seasons are on YouTube they are Highly entertaining. One Fine Day Castaway 17 is what made me fall for 17. So I highly recommend it. Great. Um, On that note, I just want to like quickly shout out that nowadays with this like current technology and like sort of fourth generation of like self-producing, like you can kind of film yourself and put whatever you want on YouTube for your fans. There are a lot of like YouTube exclusive quote unquote reality shows. Yes. Um, one of which is is called Shiny's Back. That came out during Story of Light in May. It was just like a I think it had like six episodes of just like them doing different stuff. Right. Um, there's also Going 17 which is uh, they have Going 17 and also Going 17 spinoff. Basically, it's just like it's the same thing. It's it's just behind the scenes, like 30 minute episodes of them like filming themselves behind the scenes of their current tour. Yeah. Ideal cut. Um, there's Pentory. That's Pentagon. Pentagon's sort of like uh, behind the scenes self yeah. cam. Uh, Got Seven's Hard Carry. Hard Carry. And Monster then, X's is called X-Ray. Uh-huh. And Wiki Miki has one called What's Up. Yeah, I that think this is, is just, entirely English subbed on, oh, their, nice. on their YouTube channel. I feel like this is just something that's like a like a symptom of the recent of the recent years and how easy it is to make your own reality shows mm-hmm. that I think a lot of groups like it's a it's very, very likely that if if there is a group you like, they have done a reality show before. Mm-hmm. Um and it's probably on their YouTube channel or on their V Live channel if it didn't air on real TV. Um, Because that's an easy thing that you can do now. Yeah. Um, But sometimes they're locked up. Like Exo's Exo Mentory is you have to pay for it on V Live. It's Um, bullshit. We stole it like good kids. But you know, like that's that's an option too. But those so, stolen links are no longer available. Yeah, they no. don't they don't work anymore. Um, but that's the same with like EXO Showtime, which was a reality show. Right. Um, like also EXO Showtime, up. EXO Mentory, like those are locked up, gone forever. Um, but uh, if you have a group that you're really into, I strongly suggest that you just like go to their Wikipedia. I mean, not their Wikipedia, their YouTube channel, and see if they have a show. Um, and if their their show on their official channel isn't sub. The like going 17 on the official 17 channel is not subbed. But if you look up going 17 English subbed on YouTube, someone there's, else has it. There's a channel called Blue Fever. I'll shout her out right now. <laughs> and she's subbed every single episode of it. Um, she does a great job. So there are subbed versions available. Just just do a little digging. Yeah, Idol Reality is fun. It's fun to see. It's fun to see your group like outside of their normal quote unquote, quote unquote element idol lives. Yeah. Um, like, yeah. And I feel like so many of 
like it's a, such a huge part of the culture these days. But the the YouTube compilations, the like mm-hmm. moments I think about or the whatever, yeah. like those compilation type videos. Those, most like, of those moments stuff, yeah. are from these kinds of shows. Mm-hmm. Totally. Um, and reality is fun. And like EXO told us the other day, they're doing a reality show soon we should see it very soon they haven't done one in a while um but it's always exciting you're making a face i'm just tired of them (laughs) (laughs) so quick we're the only ones all the other xols in the world are so mad about how much how they're not getting any promotion this time and we're both like i'm tired it's enough Everything they, <laughs> they take a deep breath and I'm like, no, <laughs> no, thank you. You can go. You now. may leave, sir. <laughs> Goodbye. Oh, I just like like I already think about them all the time. And like now, not all of them. <laughs> I already One think of about Chanyo all the time. There you go. And Tell now and now he's everywhere. And now it's like, ugh. <sighs> If I'm not specifically mm. occupying my brain with like a specific task, like, right. oh, I'm at work and I'm teaching children, then my brain is just automatically thinking about Chanyo and it's tiring. <laughs> like, it's just tiring. tiring. Yeah, well, well, give your brain a break. Watch some idol reality shows. They're fun and they're good for you. Yeah, I'm currently occupying my brain with Going 17. Yeah. Which is a phenomenal show. I highly recommend it. It's super fun. Yeah, I like it as well. I also like Going Mm -hmm. 17. That's a good rec. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll take a deep breath and we'll be back (gasps) with our random game. Okay, we're back. And we got IU. IU. Uh, I already brought her up this episode. Isn't that so weird? Yeah, we've already been talking about her. They they listen to us, man. <laughs> they really do. Um, but anyway, IU, her given name is Lee ji Um, And she's professionally known as IU. She's a solo singer. And she's also an actress. Um, she is with a company that's now called Kakao M. But it was formerly called Lowen Entertainment. Um, oh. And she debuted at the age of 15. 15 with an album called Lost and Found, um, which did not initially. We talked about it on our solo artist yeah. episode mm-hmm. about how her debut stage is very odd. It's like very formal, very classical. It's kind. It's yeah, just she's like a recital. Like a, yeah, it's like a weird classical recital. And she recalls that debut stage as the crowd like hurling insults at her and like booing her off the stage. She, she talked about it on a Hyori. Like I was talking about the Hyori Bed and Breakfast where she worked on like she's I feel like she brings up in the show how awkward and bad and weird her debut was mm. and how she never thought she'd get past it yeah and she originally like I just read that she um, actually joined this company like and she lived with her younger brother and her grandmother and cousins in like great poverty and like loved going to the studio because there she could eat whenever she wanted and she had a place to sleep um, so she came from like a pretty tough background or like a pretty tough situation yeah. and then like like really like now she's continuously known as one of them. She was one of 2000. She was the most popular celebrity uh, in 2017. Um, she's like constantly named on like the Forbes, like power celebrity list. Yeah. Um, she's hugely popular um, Her faces. She's the face of one of the most popular soju companies. They mm-hmm. put her face on all the boxes and all the posters. Um, she work. Everyone wants to work with her. Yeah, um, she, she's cool. She collaborates <laughs> with a lot of people. Um, she so she like initially debuted in 2007. It wasn't until like 2010 when she produced or when she released a song called "Good Day" that she like really hit the top of the charts. And then from then, she's kind of like held a pretty steady, if not like increasingly strong hold on the charts. Um, she's known as Korea's little sister. She right. has like a girl's next door image. Um, and she's sort of g- genreized um, <laughs> as like R&B soul K-pop. But what right. really sets her apart and I think like what makes her an interesting idol is that like her songs, they they're very different from each other. Right. Like all of her albums have kind of a different style. She's kind style. of that like Beck 
like you know like not she's not as oh, weird yeah, yeah, yeah. as Beck you but said no Beck and I thought Beck yeah not Beck I was like disagree Beck the Scientologist yeah, yeah, yeah. rocker B C K Beck yeah, yeah, yeah. in that all of his albums are different I feel like I use albums are all different yeah she, she also has really a lot she loves a biting lyric mm-hmm. she loves a like taken down a society with a lyric yeah um, I've she also loves seen- a super stylized music video yeah. I've also seen a lot of people like this year specifically, like she's been seen hanging around a lot of like rapper boys and people Mm. are like, oh, is IU trying to go like hardcore or whatever? Mm. Um, But it's very interesting. She's really funny. And like I said, on on Hiori's Bread and Breakfast, it's really fun to see her. She seems like a completely different person from her stage persona in real life. And they all, everyone, everyone on the show can do an impression of her because she has this like very weird like shuffle run when she like walks <laughs> around and they like love making fun of it. She is a really fun episode of Knowing Brothers, um, which you can watch on Netflix under the title Men on a Mission, right. um, where she goes on with uh, a co-star of hers from one of her recent dramas. Um, the co-star is a guy and uh, the so it's just the two of them and they had like dating rumors or whatever. Um, but they have, they have a fun episode together. So if you want to see like her sort of let loose or whatever, um, that's a fun show. To yeah. Watch. All right. Well, since this episode's going so long, we should probably just watch an MV. Now, what is her most popular music video? Her most popular music video is called palette, which features G dragon. Oh my God, I love I, this yeah, song. Love okay. This, this song. is so exciting. This song came out a year ago. It has 97 million views. All right, let's check out palette. Put the subtitles on. Okay. Yeah, she has a company that subtitles the videos. (laughs) She has a cute short haircut. Mm -hmm. I Um, love this song. So she's just in like a white room, confetti's falling, pink records playing. Oh, is that a wig? It has to be. She has like long pink hair. She's talking about Corinne Bailey Ray. For sure. Yeah. Oh, (laughs) it says so on the cassette. She likes purple, not pink. (laughs) Pajamas with buttons. Lipstick. She has like a really cute in that. Oh, cute. In that scene, she had like a like a 1930s like traveling outfit on with like a hat and a jacket and and heels that all match. Yeah. But so the, the premise of this whole song is basically like. I'm 25 and I think I know who I am now and these are the things that I like. So right. basically all of the lyrics are just listing like I prefer short hair over long hair. Um, I And she's just sort of like reflecting over her career. Because at yeah. this point, like if she's 25, then she's been an idol for 10 years. Yeah. And previously the single a couple of years before this was 23. Yeah. Which was like a little also talking about her age, but it was in a more like sassy, like should I get a boyfriend or should I get rich? Like I I don't know i'm yeah, 23 yeah, yeah. like and this one mm. she feels a little more sure like yeah. i am 25 mm-hmm. and it's a little bit more like pensive and reflective in the sense that like she's just sort of saying you don't have to like me but these are the things that i that i like about th- myself this is who i am i'm and truly I'm fine truly fine she's doing a cute i think dance. i know who i am a little here's g dragon He's not actually in this video. <laughs> oh, he's talking. I've never noticed Jean Dragon know is talking to her in these lyrics. He calls her Gion and he says, like, you're just you. Like, let me give you advice for I just turned 30. Like, here. Oh, you're, you're so, so beautiful. Cute. You're fully you bloomed. Oh my god, that's so cute. He's giving her it's like this a is little precious. like like <laughs> encouraging note. I've heard this song so many times and I've never thought about any of this. This is so cute. That's really sweet. I love idols that are friends. <laughs> I do too. <laughs> Oh, she's so cute. Yeah, she's so cute. (laughs) 
But it does make me sad that a cur- that a recurring lyric is "I know you hate me." Yeah, but we talked about last week. Her new song "Beep Beep" is yeah, also it's all about like. <laughs> She must get a lot of hate. She must I get a lot of shit. We talked about this in our anti fine episode that like the more popular you are, the, the more, more people hate you. you have. Yeah, that must be true. Um, but anyway, that was IU. Um, I feel like it's not fair to say that that's a like good sample of her music in the se- only because her music style all over changes the all the time. Like she's a chameleon. She does all kinds of different stuff. Every, every album she comes out with. Yeah. So, uh, I love IU. Um, yeah, she's great. That's that. Do you have a recommendation for this week? I do. My recommendation in the sort of vein of like self-producing, like you can put anything you want on YouTube is, um, the, quote unquote music video for holiday by 17 oh my god yes i'm so good um so this music video it it is technically like the official music video for the song holiday is one of my favorite songs off of the uh you make my day album that came out over the summer it had oh my on it um the music video is filmed and directed by Won Wu, one of the members of the hip hop team. Um and it just like features a lot of behind the scenes footage of them like at their concerts and sort of like on a vacation. They're clearly in LA when like, they were here I when know. we saw them. Uh, I know. It's like them at a house in Malibu like get it, drinking and like having fun and going to the beach and then and, like having a big group team Running dinner around and, then, and dancing and they just do this like fucking goofy ass dance and they're so sweet and precious and i love that song and i love ming Hao, and i love 17 yay <laughs> that's a good dancer i feel like i teased mine already but also there's a part of me thinking that at some point in the last 39 episodes i have recommended this before <laughs> But I'm going to say it again anyway. There was worth a, a double wreck. <laughs> yeah, there was an episode of Shiny's Hello Baby where they woke the boys up at dawn uh, like via boys. megaphone and then just played this weird children's song that has really complicated, hard to hear lyrics yeah. that are just like, wake up and brush your teeth and put on your backpack and whatever. And they play it for them twice. And then they're like, whoever can like just do the song in one take, gets to go back to sleep and doesn't have to make breakfast. But it takes hours. Like, yeah. It take, seems to take forever. They, like, are writing lyrics on their hands and, like, hitting each other. And, it like, it the clip on YouTube, I'm going to look it up right now. I want to say it's 17 minutes long. I was going to say it's at least 30 minutes long. Like, they wake up at the crack of dawn. 1607 yeah. on the shiny wake up song on YouTube. <laughs> they wake up to the song playing. So the song just starts playing at the crack of dawn and they're obviously not paying attention to it because they're like, what is happening? I just came from this deep sleep. And then the producers is like do you remember the lyrics and they're like no fuck you let me sleep <laughs> and it's really great and they get yeah. more and more mad and they get more and more like excited and key wants to beat them all so badly yeah and it's and Tamien tries to cheat and he can't do it and no. it's so funny and you know immediately pulls out a pen yeah and, like, he's like just, the first one to get yeah. pen and paper and be like i'm gonna figure this out okay. it's so funny i love it shiny wake up song <laughs> and it's a great example of the fucking mess that shiny's hello baby was yeah 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 no totally because i think the kid the kid they leave the kid asleep for all of oh, yeah, the, like, kid's the kid's not there at all he's asleep the entire time <laughs> he's probably i mean he's like in another room yeah yeah. All right. Well, that's it for this week. Um, next week, we're going to continue this topic a little bit and talk about our favorite reality show of all time. We, we got married. Specifically, we're like, you know what? We're going to have too much to say about that show. So we'll just put it on a separate episode entirely. So next week, we'll be talking about We Got Married and one of our favorite We Got Married couples. Exactly. Not to be spoiled. Not until to be spoiled. next week. Stay, stay tuned. Uh, <laughs> until then, if you want to reach us at AMA K-pop pod on Twitter and Instagram, AMA K-pop pod at gmail.com, AMA K-pop pod tumblr.com for all of our links. I'm getting really good at that. Uh, all right. We'll see you guys next week. Bye-bye. Tongyan, your inspiration. <laughs> <laughs>